Bronchial refers to the small airways of the lungs, and itis means inflammation. So bronchiolitis is inflammation of the small airways in the lungs. It most often is caused by infection from the respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. It mostly affects young children, causing illness in nearly every child at some point in their life. The name respiratory syncytial virus comes from the virus causing cells lining the respiratory tract to merge, forming a large multinucleated cell called a syncytia. Respiratory syncytial virus is part of the pneumoviridae family, and it's transmitted when an infected person sneezes or coughs and spreads thousands of droplets containing the virus into the surrounding area, up to about 2 meters or 6 feet away. These droplets can then land in the mouths or noses of people nearby, or get inhaled into the lungs. The virus can also survive on surfaces for a few hours, so it's possible to get the virus by touching a surface like a contaminated doorknob and then touching your own eyes, nose, or mouth. Upon entering the body, the virus encounters the epithelial cell lining of the nasopharynx, which is the part of your throat nearest your nose. It creates some local damage and then works its way down the respiratory tree, kind of like a secret agent repelling down a rope of mucus. It goes down past the trachea and main bronchi, and eventually reaches the bronchioles, its primary target. Respiratory syncytial virus is an enveloped virus with a linear negative sense strand of RNA, which means that once the virus enters its RNA into a respiratory epithelial cell, that strand has to get converted into a complementary sense strand in order to get translated. The cell is forced to use its energy and organelles to make viral proteins, basically turning it into a virus factory. The new viruses invade neighboring cells, creating multinucleated syncytia out of some while destroying others. The cellular destruction attracts nearby immune cells, like the natural killer cells whose job it is, is to kill the virus infected cells. Immune cells release various chemokines, which create an inflammatory reaction that makes epithelial cells secrete more mucus and makes the blood vessels in the walls of the airways more leaky. More immune cells and more fluid enters the damaged areas, creating inflammation and swelling. The extra fluid in the walls of the airway make the walls thicker and narrows the airway. Children typically have narrower airways than adults to begin with, so this additional narrowing of the airways affects them the most, and largely explains why they disproportionately suffer from bronchiolitis. In addition, dead cells and mucus slide into the airways forming mucus plugs, which can trap air behind the plug. Over time, trapped air slowly diffuses into the bloodstream, and tiny airways collapse, a process called atelectasis. Sometimes the mucus plugs end up acting like one-way valves, allowing air to enter but not to escape the bronchioles. In other words, air keeps going in with each inhalation until the lungs are really inflated, but the air can't escape during exhalation. This is called air trapping. Both atelectasis and air trapping can sometimes be seen in different regions of the lungs at the same time, like in this chest x-ray. Atelectasis and air trapping both reduce the lung's ability to bring in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Over time, a serious RSV infection can lead to hypoxemia, which is a decreased oxygen content in the blood. Although the main cause of bronchiolitis is respiratory syncytial virus, it can be caused by other viruses like adenovirus, human Boca virus, and human metanumovirus. It can also be caused by other pathogens or viruses, like the bacteria Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Sometimes a severe bout of bronchiolitis may be due to more than one of these invaders attacking at the same time. Initially, bronchiolitis symptoms are similar to the common cold, congestion, pharyngitis, sore throat, and cough. If the infection becomes more severe, it can lead to symptoms like difficulties breathing, wheezing, and fever. If there's hypoxia, it can be especially dangerous for a child's developing brain, and the body's natural response is to increase heart rate and breathing in an attempt to deliver more oxygen to the brain more quickly. Over time, this can lead to exhaustion and requires hospitalization. Young infants with bronchiolitis can also experience central apnea, which is where they have short periods of time where they just stop breathing altogether. 
The diagnosis of bronchiolitis is largely a clinical diagnosis based on whether RSV is known to be circulating at a given time of the year, the child's age, and the presence of classic signs and symptoms. Children at risk for bronchiolitis include those who weren't breastfed, those born prematurely, and those with neuromuscular disorders that can't easily clear their airways. Although it's not always needed, diagnostic testing for RSV can also be done by swabbing epithelial cells in the nasopharynx and looking for the presence of viral antigens. There's no proven antiviral therapy for bronchiolitis, so treatment usually consists of supplemental oxygen and giving fluids to prevent dehydration. For some kids at high risk of serious complications like those born very prematurely, with significant pulmonary disease like bronchial pulmonary dysplasia, or with congenital heart disease, monthly injections of a pre-made antibody against RSV called palivizumab has been shown to be beneficial. All right, as a quick recap, bronchiolitis is inflammation of the small airways that typically affects infants and young children. Inflamed airways, along with atelectasis and air trapping due to mucus plugs, can lead to difficulties breathing and hypoxia. Bronchiolitis is typically diagnosed clinically, and the treatment is supportive with supplemental oxygen and hydration. Hey guys, Vince here. So, bronchiolitis, it's a big deal for the little ones, right? So, I hope that today's video was useful to you. Today's script was written by Charles Davis. It was edited by Debal Senhoroy and Rishi Desai. I created the illustrations. Kyle Slynn performed the voiceovers. And Sam Gillespie did the video editing. If you'd like to support the creation of more of these kinds of videos, I encourage you to check us out at osmosis.org. There, we're trying our very best to become a one-stop shop for all of your medical education needs. We have tens of thousands of quiz questions and flashcards. We have study schedule organizers. We have unreleased videos and other great things to help you learn medicine. If you'd like a second opinion, check us out on Facebook. You guys have been absolutely great to us. We have over a thousand five-star reviews and a bunch of lovely testimonials from people across all sorts of disciplines explaining exactly how osmosis has helped them become better clinicians. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.